In recent years at the Capitol, state policymakers have tried to hammer out a broad agreement on an extended producer responsibility proposal, which would shift the burden of recycling onto manufacturers and hopefully limit future waste production. And while a broad framework is still up for debate in Albany, last year, state lawmakers and Governor Hochul agreed on a narrow application of extended producer responsibility with a law requiring companies in the carpet business to develop and implement a program to provide for the collection and recycling of carpets if they want to do business in the Empire State. Fast forward to today, and there's a proposal on the table to enact a mattress collection program. For more on that legislation and the possibilities of a broader extended producer responsibility measure, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Scott Cassell, CEO and founder of the Product Stewardship Institute, a nonprofit advocacy group championing extended producer responsibility initiatives for more than two decades. Welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you, Dave. So what is envisioned with the mattress collection program proposed in uh, legislation here in New York by Assemblymember Amy Pollan, Westchester County Democrat? Like any other waste product, this is being uh, disposed of right now in New York and all across the country, except in four states that have this kind of law, which sets up the infrastructure for collection and transporting mattresses so that they can be recycled keep them out of the landfills. We don't need these large items to take up capacity. New York has enough of a problem um, with its capacity like the Northeast does as well. It offers the funding for this as well. In this case, it is a small fee that consumers would pay when they buy a mattress. And then it would be managed by the Mattress Recycling Council, which is the nonprofit organization that's set up by the mattress industry. So it puts the responsibility on the producers of the mattresses in order to develop this solution. And how big of a change would something like this be from the current landscape? For example, are mattresses being recycled in any capacity right now in New York? To a certain degree, but you know, the lack of a funding source uh, really makes it very difficult And for the most part, they're all being disposed of. The waste management industry doesn't like these to go into their landfills because they always rise to the top. They're kind of bouncy, as we know. They come to the top, they get stuck in the tractor treads uh, because of the coils. The waste to energy plants don't like them. So the waste industry wants them out, number one. Number two is that environmental groups like ours, citizens, and the government wants them to be recycled. Um, And in this case, the industry is joining in to support this legislation. And in terms of actually recycling mattresses, does there need to be a change in how they're manufactured in order to ensure that all mattresses can be recycled? Or do the mattresses that are for sale in New York right now all lend themselves to being recycled? It's just a question of whether it's getting done or not. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, And it's something right now that the mattress industry has not been as receptive to in packaging legislation that is in New York. There's three bills in New York right now on packaging legislation that's extended producer responsibility. And it would require the producers of the packaging to put different fees themselves on the different materials based upon how recyclable they are. So for example, if you have a Number one, plastics, uh, PETs that are very viable for markets. They have places to go once they're processed in a recycling plant. They have value to them. Those would require uh, the producers to pay less of a fee than a non-recyclable plastic, for example. And in this case, you have, you know, mattresses are very different. Uh, There's a lot of new ones that have like gadgets in them, electronics and other things that make them more expensive to recycle. We're not saying that they have to ban those type of products, but we do think it's important that they pay their way. If you have a a simple mattress that costs less, it shouldn't cost the same as a very complex mattress that may not be able to be recycled for all the reasons of electronics and other things in it. And why does it make sense to do a extended producer responsibility proposal in the world of mattresses. Is this low-hanging fruit when it comes to recycling, when we just need to tap into it? Is there something else about mattresses and maybe the threat that they pose to the environment that requires specific action? Why this bill? Why now? It is a very noticeable piece of the waste stream. It's big, it's bulky, 
90% of the materials can be recycled. And there's uh, acceptance that these need to be taken out of the waste stream and can be recycled. You could say it's a lower uh, fruit on the tree here. Carpets is similar, uh, very bulky, take it out of the waste stream, highly recyclable. Same thing with mattresses. Packaging is 40% of the waste stream. That is taking longer. It's more complex. Uh, mattresses is a lower percentage, but it's still very big, bulky, and no one really wants it in that waste stream to begin with. And it's a, it's a pain in the butt for consumers as well. This system will make it convenient for the consumer. It has convenient standards that the industry will have to meet, um, will be overseen by the Department of Environmental Conservation, and it'll make it more convenient for the residents so that they will have an opportunity to actually recycle their mattress. And what is the fee that consumers will potentially be facing if this became law to help cover the cost of the recycling? And would the fee differ depending on, say, the cost of a mattress? Right now, it, it does not depend upon the cost of the mattress. You know, it, it would get into the complexity, as we mentioned before, in terms of the recyclability. It does have to do somewhat with the cost of the mattress. The cost in the other states, the four other, I believe it's about 15 to 20 $25 maximum for the mattress themselves. And that's going to be determined by the producers. They have to do, once this bill is enacted, they would put together a stewardship plan. It's kind of like the architect's blueprint for how they would go about setting this system up. You know, what's going to be, where are the, all those collection points going to be? They could be at recycling facilities, solid waste facilities, healthcare facilities, schools, colleges, hotels, and so forth. And also retailers selling mattresses. They're gonna set up all the different collection points and then they're going to uh, put together what they believe the costs will be for that system, and then they'll figure it out in terms of what that price should be and propose it to the state agency, the DEC. And in terms of an extended producer responsibility system in, in New York more broadly, or for packaging specifically, what do you think is key for any proposal to both be beneficial to the environment, but also not overly burdensome on the producers? Because here in Albany, the challenge has been to strike th that balance with some people saying proposals uh, bend too far one way or another. That's the art of legislation. That's the art of good governance. Um, and that's what we try to do as an organization. We uh, work with state and local governments. They're our board of directors. We have partners that are uh, these producers or manufacturers of products and packaging, uh, retailers, uh, environmental groups, and others. We try to balance the policy so that it is doable, but also aggressive. And you want something that's moving forward. It's not static. You want to make sure that there's opportunities in the legislation for flexibility for the producer on one hand, but also to let's say, have uh, best practices introduced and continual improvement over time. Do you feel like the stakeholders in this equation are willing to negotiate in good faith or because, say, environmentalists and business interests are so often at each other's throats, is it hard to get them to come to the table on something like this? There are environmental groups that are focused here. Uh, we would like them to be. Um, they focusing on the packaging um, and some of the other products, toxics. They're, I'm sure that they would be very interested in the toxic materials that might be in mattresses as, as we would as well. So we would welcome them in. Uh, the producers themselves, the uh, International Sleep Products Association has been willing to have those conversations. Um, I participated and facilitated between the government, um, state and local government, and the industry out in Oregon. They had sort of a next generation piece of legislation that was passed two years ago, and that will be implemented soon. There's been three laws passed that were about a decade ago in Connecticut and Rhode Island and California. You know, the industry has shown interest. We're very glad about that. And you know, it requires the industry to accept this and really take pride in the program that they develop. Do you think it's possible for New York to dramatically 
limit the the waste it's sending to landfills and to increase the products it's recycling without some sort of extended producer responsibility legislation say say a, a broad proposal or are there alternatives that we should be considering uh, if we can't come to a deal on say an EPR for packaging here I'm talking from a great deal of experience. I've been in the waste field for 40 years, for seven years before starting this organization in 2000. For seven years, I was the waste policy director in Massachusetts, and we tried everything, incentives, financial incentives for the, the, the local governments, for the industry, uh, you know, giving funding um, and education, enforcement, everything. And we got the rate up to a certain place but it stagnated for the past decade here in Massachusetts, where our organization is based. And same thing in New York. New York cannot afford to not do an EPR for packaging or for mattresses or for carpet or for any other material. It really does require changing the playing field. You know, right now we have this playing field in the United States that has sort of spotty recycling and the requirements are pretty minimal. Well, we want to raise that playing field so the industry can compete in a new playing field. And there's so many that want to do this, but they need to have legislation like this so they can perform and show that they can increase the recycling. That's the only way that we're going to reduce waste, reuse and recycle enough to make it so that New York doesn't have to export so much waste or to have additional landfills that are there. We had the Mobro that was uh, sent around in the, what, the 80s or so, where you had the garbage barge. You know, we don't want to see that again. And so this is the way to do it. Uh, these laws are in place all across Europe, packaging, EPR, extended producer responsibility laws in place for over 35 years in Europe, over 15 years in Canada, South America, Middle East, and now four laws in the United States. And this would be, if passed on mattresses, the fifth uh, mattress EPR law in the United States. Well, finally, in your personal life, are you a wish cycler or are you a you know ruthless pragmatist when it comes to what ends up in your recycling and what ends up in your garbage or your compost? That's a great question. You know, I'm as confused as everyone else about what needs to go into my bin that I have and bring in the curb, but I just brought it in from outside. You know, I, I, I think I'm erring on the side of being cautious because I, I know enough that if we wish cycle too much, we're putting contamination in and just paying for the transport of stuff that can't be recycled to somewhere else where it can't be recycled, and then it has to be disposed of anyway. So you know, the best thing to do is know your website for your town, city, county, whatever, and check it out. Uh, make sure you know what is able to be recycled and how to do it. But let's say you know it, it is true that it is very confusing for the consumer, and that is something else we're hoping to do for the packaging EPR legislation in New York. Well, we've been speaking with Scott Cassell. He's the CEO and founder of the Product Stewardship Institute. Scott, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dave. Support for the Capital Press Room provided by the independent power producers of New York. IPNY's annual Clean Energy Spring Conference and Showcase is set for May 9th and 10th at the Albany Capital Center. More information at IPPNY.org.